I would call it a rivalry now. Winning this weekend is not really going to help us with the 2013 season, but it will keep our 2015 season alive. You're listening to WMEC Sports Radio. It's Thanksgiving week, but Maryland men's soccer isn't taking a vacation. The Terps travel to Notre Dame this Sunday to take on the Fighting Irish in the NCAA Sweet 16. This week, we spoke with Coach Sasha Swarovski and midfielder Cody Albrecht. How your role has changed, especially going into postseason now, getting more minutes, definitely stepping up in that midfield position. Yeah, I mean, obviously I'm playing a little bit more now, um, but for the most part it hasn't really changed, just keeping a positive attitude, uh, trying to influence the guys around me, make the guys around me better, um, and just solidify the midfield with guys in there like Mael and Sue and Amar and even the guys that come in off the bench. You know, Just making the guys around me better is really keeping, the, keeping my role simple and doing the things that I'm asked. Having played with a different team and now coming to this team, sort of a new guy, but also having that college playing experience, does that affect how you take practice and talk to these freshmen on the team? Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit of both. Uh, being a newcomer, you know, I look at the guys that have been here for a while to kind of lead the way, um, but at the same time, you know, I've played in college athletics and I know what it takes to be a student athlete in a Division One program, so, um, you know, I think it's a little bit of both. It's a little bit of learning how this program works and the values and the everyday everyday things that involve being a college athlete at Maryland, but at the same time, you know, helping the freshmen through things that I've been through at, at St. John's in my past. Going back to the change in, in minutes and in playing time, was there anything you saw this season or you did this season that, that led to that change? Uh, not, not, not really, no. I mean, the, guy, the guys in front of me have been playing really well, um, and I think, you know, I, I just got my opportunity and I took advantage of my opportunity, but I think it was just, you know, keeping a positive attitude and, you know, doing the things that I was supposed to do in practice and in training and uh, mainly just keeping a positive attitude, to be honest. That's the most important thing when you're not playing is making sure you're doing all the right things in training so when you do, you get your chance to on the field that you make an impact. Well, several times when you've jumped up and won those headers, now, <laughs> obviously you're not an Alex Cronale where you're 6'6", six, six, but how do you how do you jump that high? I don't, that's a terrible question, but how do you get those headers every time? Uh, I, I learned from a couple of really small guys uh, at St. John's and, and prior. So, I mean, it, heading, heading a lot of the time is all about timing. So if you time it well, um, a lot of the time you can win headers, but it helps to be taller. I'd like to be Alex but before I'd be me in terms of height, So, um, but it's a lot about timing. And do you see that as, as one of your secret weapons or so, is being able to, to time that right? And, and is that something that you've practiced? Yeah, I think it, keep, I think it kept, uh, catches a lot of people off guard because of my size. They're, you know, they're not really ready for a, a little 5'5", five, 5'6", five, five, kid to win as many headers as I do. The back line, the two center backs, you play more of the defensive mid position, and you've got uh, Alex and Ivan back there who have played almost every game together. How important is that strong, consistent back line to this team and where they are right now? You know, I think it's very important, you know, especially with center backs getting a good uh, pairing with each other and knowing their tendencies and knowing each other's t- tendencies with the outside backs and with me. So uh, playing with each other is always important, but I think at the same time we've had guys step in, you know, in one game or two games and even half the season they've done really well. So, you know, it's important to have consistency, but at the same time we have enough guys to step in if something does happen or if a guy's having a rough game or even, you know, just for a couple minutes, I think – even then, it, it's fine. And last week, you guys played the 2014 champions. This week, you played 2013. This this school itself has a little bit of a, a bitter taste in the mouth. In their mouth last time in the championship, they lost 2-1. And there's about a third of the guys that have, are coming back from that game. Have they said anything towards that? Is it just preparing for a very good Notre Dame team? I think it's a, a little bit of both. I think mainly preparing for Notre Dame is the most important thing. Obviously, the guys that have been here are a lot of the older guys, so I'm a, a close with them. And uh, I think you know doing it for them, and because they still do have that taste in their mouth, is really important. But I think preparing in the way that we normally would prepare is the most important thing going into this game. Not necessarily looking at it as you know a revenge game, but rather just a, a game that we're going to play in our season. And they have a guy up top in. Gallagher, who has nine goals, is that something this team's focusing in on? Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll focus in on that, but at the same time, you know, we're going to focus in on focus in on our game and what we have to do. You know, Sasha's always talking about fearing no one but having respect for the for the opponent. So, 
you know, we'll have respect for Notre Dame because they are a very good side, but at the same time, you know, we're going to focus on our game and do what it takes to win on our side. In that 2013 game, they had players like Harry Ship, who now plays for the Chicago Fire, and then on Maryland side, you have Zach Steffen and Patrick Mullins, and all these players have gone on to, to play in the next level and, and play it well, and you have Clark coaching Notre Dame and Sasho here. Do you feel that the level of this this game itself just knowing the history is heightened I would call it a rivalry now in a sense with the amount of times that you know we've played Notre Dame and the the consistency between Sash and uh, and Clark so I think with the with the talent of level of players the the rivalry is is really gaining ground and I think it even more more so going forward it'll continue to gain ground with the with the uh, freshmen that we have and the players that they have First game of the season was against Notre Dame. Now yep. you're playing them again. A lot of, has changed on both teams. How would you describe the transition and the transformation of your team? You know, we, we had a very strong game against Notre Dame at the beginning of the year, uh, but we couldn't find the back of the net. Um, and uh, I think we've improved in all aspects, really. Um, I think we're better defensively now than we were at the beginning of the year. I think that we're sharper in the attacking part of the field. Uh, but I also think Notre Dame's improved as well. Um, I think it's two teams that are used to playing this late in the year and two teams that know how to peak at the right time. Um, I think both teams are probably uh, capable of winning the national championship. Some players that played in that game included Amar, uh, Elney, and, and Eric Williamson. They all had shots on goal in that game, and they've all been very important parts of this team going forward. How important is their confidence on this team at this moment? Well, I think, you know, Eric Williamson's playing at the highest level uh, of his career so far. You know, he's, he's extremely sharp. He's scoring goals. He's confident. Sebastian is still working extremely hard and is a threat at all times, and teams have to pay attention to him. And Amar has really, you know, sort of come into his own. You know, they all hit a little bit of a lull at different points in the season, but I think right now with with uh, the games not coming so so quickly, uh, they're all in a very good place physically and mentally. I think they understand exactly what the college game brings. So, um, but Notre Dame has also uh, improved as well. I think that, you know they're they're a veteran team and they're a team that doesn't get rattled. Uh, they believe in what they do. Um, I think it's going to be a good chess match. And talking about their last game, they played Tulsa in, and played to PKs, but they were dominant for most of their performance. Whereas you against Virginia were very dominant. How do you see this matchup between right now two teams that are showing their dominance throughout the game, both offensively, offensively, but more specifically in their back lines? Yeah, I think both teams, if you look statistically, are very similar. Our records are almost identical. You know, we tied the first time we played, um, uh, and uh, you know, I think the goals, four goals against, are almost identical. So I think there's 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 very little separation. I think it really is a battle of, the, of heavyweights. I think it's two of the top teams over the past, uh, not only a few years, but maybe the past decade um, since Bobby Clark has been coaching there. So, um, but it's a fun matchup. I think, you know, I know they respect us and we respect them. And I think it's going to be a heck of a college game. Uh, the game at the beginning of this year uh, was was a beginning of a regular season, but this is a, uh, an NCAA tournament game. So, um, you know, winning this weekend is not really going to help us with the 2013 season, but it will keep our 2015 season alive. So that's the way we're looking at it is we'd, we'd love to, uh, you know, survive in advance and, and keep playing for this year's championship. And uh, and we'll go from there. And both teams currently have uh, a number of pros that will be playing in, in MLS and, uh, and perhaps beyond at some point, uh, uh, you know, I think our pedigree of producing players is second to none, and Notre Dame certainly has a number of terrific players that have gone on to great success in MLS. So um, I think it's two of the better training grounds for the professional environment. Um, I think we both do it the right way. So just a, a lot of respect. And Coach Clark, obviously, I, I go way back with him. Uh, he's someone I have tremendous respect for, and I know he feels the same way. So uh, this is a kind of game that... Uh, that really should be nationally televised because it, it's two teams that do it the right way and I think the soccer will be very good and you know the outcome I think will be close.